Hello fellow stackers, 365 here, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some more items of silver from my long-term stack, my deep stack. There's many different terms that people call it, but it's basically the stack of silver that I've squirreled away, I've hidden in different locations, and I'll be continuing to hold it for many, many years to come. Now, the last time I did a video like this, it lasted for just under two hours, and that was when I went through some of my capsulated silver. And everyone that watched that video said they really enjoyed it. However, I don't want to make this video quite as long as that. So therefore, I've actually picked a smaller container of silver to go through today. So this is from my deep stacks at silver you might have not necessarily seen before. Or it's silver you might have seen before where I've unboxed it. But then you haven't seen it in the YouTube stack because it's literally just gone straight into storage. So before we start, I'm going to have a sip of this whiskey. Now this whiskey is from the barrel that you can see up there. And I've actually been sent another barrel from Cobra Stacker. And for those of you that missed that video, here it is. And it's basically a wooden barrel that you can put your own whiskey into. Now a number of people suggested that I could turn it into an infinity bottle. Now what an infinity bottle is, it's where you, every time you buy a bottle of whiskey, you tip a little bit into it. And it's called an infinity bottle because basically it never runs out. It continues to go forever because every time you buy a new bottle of whiskey, you add a little bit more to it. So essentially you're always topping it up. And also it's always changing flavour because you're always adding different blends and different whiskies into it. So it's gradually evolving in taste over time. And I have seen videos here on YouTube where people have had these infinity bottles for say 10, 20 even 30 years, they've literally had them for years. And some people say they taste really, really nice. And I've seen some people say that sometimes it can be a waste of time because all it takes is for you to add one whiskey that doesn't quite blend or mix very well with everything that's already in there and it can ruin the taste. So you could have an infinity bottle for like 10 years, for example, and then you add a, a whiskey into it and suddenly it, the taste is destroyed and it's very hard to, to come back from that. So yeah, something I thought quite might be a good idea so I want to say thank you to those of you that suggested that in the video. And it is definitely an idea to turn that barrel into an infinity bottle. I think that'd be quite cool just to see the tastes that I can create by mixing lots of different whiskies. Now in today's video, we're going to be going through a smaller container from my deep stack. And that is mainly because I don't want it to go on for two hours. I haven't got two hours spare today to be filming. I've literally just got in from work. I've got lots of stuff I need to do. I need to look after the children in a minute because my partner's going to uh, go to work herself. So I've literally only got around about 30 to 40 minutes. Now I'm going to do my best not to mix it in with my, my YouTube stack because I don't really want it getting mixed in. So we'll see how we get on with that. But let's get straight into it. So I'm going to try and go through as quick as we can. Now, a lot of this stuff will be generic stuff. There won't be too much fancy stuff in here. This is kind of part of my weight stack. So it's stuff that I've brought. Like I said, I might have showcased it on this channel before, but I've literally brought it, put it away into my deep stack, and it'll be staying there for minimum 20 years, more like 30 years or so. So you can see these are those Sunshine 1 ounce bars. These are actually factory sealed. Haven't cracked these ones out. So they're in there. Quite a lot of plastic out there of some of the plastic seals that I just kept hold of. Now a lot of this is in plastic zip bags and things like that. And like I said, I brought it for its weight. And that is about it really. You've got Britannia. Got a maple. Another Britannia. Is that a Britannia? Yeah, what year is that? 2020. We've got uh, another maple. Krugerand, 2023, one of the newer ones, another Britannia. So you can see it's just boring weight silver, really. Now, these are some of the American Silver Eagles that have key dates. I'm not sure if all of these have key dates, but I do know that when I made a video on key dates, there was some in here that do have lower mintage, 1991, that one. This one is 1989. And this one is 
1995 so they're in capsules and they're in ziploc bags just so they've got extra protection and also it reminds me that they're they're key dates i believe they are key dates as in they have lower mintages than some of the other years so that's why they're in about three different layers of plastic just to to protect them from the elements and everything like that the best i can we've got uh, another britannia another britannia Really, I should just put all these into um, into tubes. It'll make it probably easier to store. But yeah, they're just this is how I brought them. This is how they arrived when I brought them. This is how I've kept them. And I do think I might be able to get a slight premium for them when I come to sell because they would have been more protected as opposed to just being knocked around in a tube. Now we've got some of these, and these are really cool. Now you probably saw me showcase some of these in my capsulated stack. I did my two hour video and I've actually got one of these in my YouTube stack and a lot of people kept saying to me at the beginning when I put this in my YouTube stack that I shouldn't have it in there because it is a an older coin 1968 really really nice piece of silver you can see it says seven 0.72 grams of uh, ounces of silver and this is one of the worst condition ones it's got like sort of marks and stuff on that on there that's why I added it to my YouTube stack in the first place but these ones here are actually really cool and that is because they actually have factory mint seals on some of these ones so you can see this one here is just plain it's a, a quite a nice condition one but these ones here are actually in their original factory seals really really cool you can see look at the plastic you can just tell by the plastic how long it's been around this coin and this might actually tarnish the coin it might do a little bit of damage to it you can already see it's getting a bit of tarnish around the edge and things like that but i'm willing to take that risk i'm willing to take that risk in the hope that because this is factory sealed it might contain more of a premium when i come to set it in the future that one's actually has that got a little hole in it there yeah it's actually got a little hole in it there but again, when someone looks to buy that, you can see that hole's not big enough for it to, to have come out of. But yeah, just really cool to think how old these coins are, yet they're still in factory seals. It's just pretty impressive, really. So yeah, I'm going to do my best to look after the packaging. Like I said, it might damage the coin. It might tarnish the coin because they're, they're in that old plastic. But at the same time, I think when someone comes to buy that, it could hold a bit more of a premium it definitely made me want to pick them up when i saw them and i think i got them from the silver forum uh, a couple of years ago but it made me want to pick them up just because i thought it was really cool the fact that they were still factory sealed now we've got some more american silver eagles and i'm not sure if these are key dates or anything in particular or whether they're just in here 2018 1993 what have we got there 2018 so yeah i'm not really sure if they're without doing some research i'm not exactly sure if they're key dates or anything like that but yeah they're in here they're in my weight stack another silver maple and then randomly we have a copper round in here now I think this is the one that I got sent from Cardiff Gold for free. I believe that was the one. So maybe I kept it separate because I thought it was quite cool. So I think this was the first time a company had actually sent me a piece of silver for me to... A uh, piece of um, metal, sorry, for me to unbox on the channel. So yeah, I put it away separate. Yeah, still cool though. Right, so we're moving over to... Right, this is my only slabbed coin. Now I only brought this just so I could make a video. Well, I brought it because I wanted to see what it looked like, what it felt like to have a slabbed coin in the hand. And also I brought it so I could make a video on slabbed coins because I didn't have any slabbed coins. I do think that, well, I'm not going to start a whole uh, topic about slabbed coins now, but I'm not a huge fan. It's a whole different topic for another video. Although it does look really, really nice. PF69. And there's nothing particularly rare or anything about this American Silver Eagle. And like I said, I literally just brought it so that I had a slabbed coin in the stack. And I actually thought the slab's a lot smaller 
when I saw people doing videos on slabbed coins and things like that, for some reason I just expected the slab to be quite a bit bigger. It's actually smaller than I think, and it is quite cool. And they're made so they can stack. They've got a little lip, so they can actually stack if you've got a few of them. But yeah, that's my only slabbed coin in my whole collection. And like I said, nothing special. It's literally just purchased. I think it was like one of the, the lowest priced slabbed American Silver Eagles I could find at the time. Just so I could see what it felt like in the hand and make a video on slabbed coins. Now we have some jewellery, again I only really brought this just so I could say I had a little bit of silver jewellery in the stack and also I thought it would be quite cool to have some silver jewellery in the stack as an experiment just to see how well it holds its premium and how well it holds its value and see if it goes up quicker than kind of your bullion silver or slower than your bullion silver, I just thought it would be quite interesting to have. So nothing too fancy, it's literally just a silver herb chain quite a nice size one it's not something i would really wear now when i first brought it i thought i might wear it sometimes like if i've got a, a jumper on or something and you can just kind of put it underneath the jumper so you can see it just a little bit but i don't know it doesn't really suit me now back in the day when i was younger i used to wear lots of i used to wear like saddle rings and sovereigns and i had a couple of big keeper rings as well and i also had a gold curb chain similar size to this actually similar thickness and everything like that yeah it was very very similar size to this and i actually paid like 300 pounds for it and this was like back in the day when i was like a youngster and i was going out to clubs and stuff like that and it cost me about 300 pounds and when i come to sell it i think i sold it for like 900 pounds so i like tripled my money on it but um but yes but now i don't really wear any jewellery at all apart from a watch and I went through a stage where I don't know I wasn't really like a style as a chab like my dad is kind of like my dad kind of likes the sort of like farmer sort of style the sort of like gypsy sort of the bare knuckle stories and the Bartley Gorman and and people like that he's really into that sort of culture he's always had sort of hunting dogs and go used to go coursing and, and stuff like that so his kind of style was like big gold keeper rings, big gold saddle rings and all stuff like that. And obviously as I grew up, I, I obviously idled my dad and I wanted to kind of wear the same stuff as him. So that's why I got into like lots of gold. But as I started kind of wearing it out and about, you kind of fall into the more chav category. And although like the, the sovereigns I was wearing, I actually had a sovereign ring and it was actually a proof sovereign that I got passed to me, passed down to me from my uncle for like a, a birthday present or a Christmas present. I actually took the proof sovereign out of the case. I've told this story before. I took the proof sovereign out of the case. This was years ago before I knew the true value of or precious metals. And I actually put the sovereign, the proof sovereign in a ring and I used to wear it. And there was people like going around like, like the typical chavs and they had like sort of gold plated fake sovereigns in rings and things like that. And I actually had a proof sovereign that I'd got mounted in like a, a nine carat gold like mount like solid gold mount and um yeah like my curb chain like i said it was a solid gold one it wasn't gold plated or anything like that and i had big saddle rings i used to buy like size z saddle rings so they were way too like big thickness wise for um for my finger to go in i take them to jewelries jewelry shops and they would resize them smaller and they would kind of move the the gold around the ring and stuff so that it had a really thick um thing so it kind of if say i was wearing it on this finger for example the thickness of the ring would actually take up the whole width of like my finger and it would be like a huge saddle ring so yeah that's what, that's kind of what i used to, to wear when i was younger but when i bought this i brought it for an experiment to see how well it would hold its value and also so I could have, so I had a little bit of silver jewellery in the stack. But at the same time, I did think about maybe wearing it. But yeah, like I said, I don't really wear jewellery now. And all of my gold that I sold, so all of my rings and my chain stuff that I actually sold, that's how I managed to, to pay for all my tattoos. Because I had it as like accessories that I used to wear. And when I kind of grew out that stage of wearing big rings and, and chains and things like that, I still wanted something that I could wear. So yeah, I, I transferred every single penny that I sold my gold rings and my chain that f for went onto my tattoos. And I, I went to like some really good tattoo artists in London and places like that. I've got someone that specialises in 
Japanese to do my sleeve. If you search Luke Ortis, um, L-U-C-A and then O-R-T-I-S, Luca Ortis, he specializes in Japanese tattoos and he actually designed this sleeve for me and everything like that. So I went to some really well-known tattoo artists in the UK to get my tattoos and that's what I kind of converted my gold jewellery into. So it was a way of still having something that I could wear but not kind of jewellery. It's like now now it's on me forever kind of thing. So yeah, that's a going off topic, but a little story for you there. Now this wasn't actually from Shards, but I just put it in here because it fitted nicely. But you might have not seen this before, but this is a combi bar, but it's a silver version. And these contain a very, very high premium. And again, I only brought this just so I had it in the stack. It's not a particularly great investment. It contains 101 gram silver bars. And they're made, like you can see there, for snapping off. So if you wanted to, you could snap these all off individually and sell them. And you could actually make some money by doing that. If you find these for the right price, and then you snap all these off individually and you put them in little capsules, you could actually make a nice little bit of profit. But it just takes a, a lot of time to do. But yeah, you can see there's 101 gram bars of silver there. So it's really cool. It's just something in the stack that at the time I didn't have any of and I just wanted to get it the right way just wanted to add it to the stack so yeah quite cool but again I wouldn't recommend these if you're trying to stack weight or anything like that for me a lot of this stuff these more premium items were brought for my channel to showcase on the channel and also just because I like the look of them now we've got some old circulated silver half crowns here this is british circulated junk silver if you like i hate the word junk because i don't think silver and junk should go in the same sentence but yeah just a little bag full there i'm not sure exactly how many we've got in there but that's quite cool then we've got some some free pennies some silver free pennies again old circulated uk silver got quite a nice size there quite a nice amount i'm not going to get them all out now because like i said i have I don't want this video to be too long but you can see we've got a nice a nice amount there there's also these aren't silver but they're in there as well they're the newer three pence piece so these are the older ones these are the newer ones i believe but yeah, these ones are silver, and obviously these ones are not silver. They're the same as I've got in the uh, the miner at the back there. Moving on, we have some... What have we got? We've got some more circulated silver. So, old circulated, pre-1947 junk silver, if you want to call it junk silver. Got a nice, I will, I will tell you what, I will get one of these out because we've got a full crown in there. And these are gorgeous looking coins. These contain quite a high premium. Look at that. 1889. Huge, really big coins. If I just grab a Britannia for size comparison, we're talking same size as a Britannia so yeah really nice size coin nice bit of history yeah I've got a couple of them and I've kind of saved the best till last because these are these are nice big silver bars here one kilogram silver bars look at this and I will get these out just because they are gorgeous pieces of silver look at that huge one kilogram silver bar serial numbered Valcambi swiss just a huge nice solid piece of silver look at that really really cool i might get one of these out one day and put them in the youtube stack because it is a really nice solid piece of silver nice bit of weight would be quite cool to have one of them out at all times on the on the display and then we've got another one here as well i think this one's got the the coa with it i believe let's have a look yeah this one's from 
Bard & Co, which is a mint here in London, in the UK. Oh, look at that. Really, really nice. Like I said, seal number on there. And you've got the seal number on the back as well. That's the date, round about when I picked this up. Look at that again. This, this one's actually got a plastic around it as well. That's how the COA is staying there. That's that's within the plastic. So that was brought brand new. And then this one here, I bought second hand. So this one's just literally raw. That's literally no plastic on that one. So yeah, really, really cool. So yeah, there we go. I'm going to wrap the video up there because like I said, I've got quite a lot to do this afternoon. But I thought it'd be quite interesting to go through some of my other pieces that you might have not necessarily seen. Let me know in the comments section the favourite bit that I showcased today. Quite a nice selection there. We've got slabbed coins. We've got the standard kind of bullion coins. We've got a couple of big bars. Volcambu bar. Yeah, old circulated silver. Just a nice selection really. So yeah, let me know your favourite piece that I showcased today. As always, thanks very much for watching. Lots of plastic here. I don't like all this plastic. <laughs> I like to see my silver like this. I like it just to be raw. But I do understand why you have to keep it protected in capsules and stuff. But yeah, that's, that's how I like my silver. Raw. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. Like I said, let me know your favourite piece in the comment section. As always, I hope you have a very, very nice day.